Welcome back to another episode of The Calling and Censored. I'm here with Claire Williamson, and she is a soul goal coach, and she helps women on the spiritual journey um, really step into their divine service and their soul mission. And obviously, we have a lot in common with that. And so I had to have her on the, share, uh, on the show to share her amazing story and a little bit on what she refers to as emotional biohacking, which I'm curious um, to learn more about what she she mentioned before we talked, uh, before we went live on the show. So I'm excited to have her here and I'm going to let her um, explain a little bit about um, what she does because she's going to be able to do that better than me. And then we're going to dive into her story. So thank you, Claire, for being on the show. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Yay. So why don't you maybe just intuitively take us to wherever um, you feel guided to, to share on how you, how your journeys unfolded for you so far? My, I mean, my spiritual journey was almost, um, you know, by accident. I think it was arriving to where I am and looking back that I realized I'd taken a very intuitive spiritual path you know, to shed those layers of everything that I'm not to get to that true I am. Mm -hmm. And that is what I help people with now, right? I'm, I, I call it the soul goal, that feeling like you're called for more, that it's one divine purpose and you're not, you're just not living it out. Mm -hmm. And you're feeling that discomfort in your life. It's showing up in your life. Um, and we help, like we get to that, we get to what that is through coaching and then we work into the expression of that through a business that is creating impact because I really, for me, it's about that ripple effect. You know, if I can create an impact through other people so that they create an impact, mm -hmm. then it's going to help the world. Um, but obviously a lot of what I do has come from where I've been, mm -hmm. which is obviously the personal story. And I'm very passionate about leveraging personal story. I feel like if we can heal all of ourselves, then we can share all of ourselves and we can take the beautiful wisdom from those experiences that perhaps broke us once and use them to really help other people. Um, and that's, I guess, where the emotional biohacking comes in. Yeah. And that's really beautiful. I mean, I feel like that's really the, the role of the, the light worker and the teacher the healer, the spiritual messenger, the spiritual warrior, whatever you want to refer to them as they've to really spin your wounds into wisdom. Like all of the things that you went through were not by accident. And, um, oftentimes there's a lot of turbulence in the light workers journey because they are here to, um, heal, grow, expand, and ascend through their own personal experience and their own, and then share that, um, in a way that's authentic and, and vulnerable enough for other people to relate to that, um, but share what it is. And so often I see women um, uh, allowing their stories to actually carry, you know, uh, shame them, you know, um, or not feel comfortable in sharing or feel like their stories actually discredit them in some cases, where in actuality, it's their greatest, it, it can be once it's perceived that way. And once you come more full circle in your journey, one of your greatest gifts because you see how it's propelled you on your divine path. Um, yeah. So bio, emotional biohacking comes in. I, you mentioned that you, that was a process that you worked with when writing your book. Yeah, because, and it's funny that you, you name the word shame, because for me, that was the feeling. It was, I experienced rape and I felt such deep shame about the experience. And I couldn't get across, I couldn't, I couldn't, it was blocking, it was blocking my voice because it made me feel like in all areas of my life, like I was being looked at in a certain way or perceived in a certain way. Um, and I think as well, it was wrapped up in childhood trauma at the same time. So it was, it was very big. And there was this moment where I realized you know, when I started digging into beliefs and how our beliefs service and they don't service, I realized that we can't actually feel shame if we don't have, you know, we don't believe there's anything to be ashamed about, you know? So it's like, it's so intricately linked with what we believe. Mm -hmm. And in the process of writing my book, which literally just began as, you know, I've got this, I've got this on my chest 
and I've got to get it off. Like, you know, I just, it just, it, it just landed in my lap, I guess. One, one Saturday morning, a few days after Christmas, 2017, I think. And I just started writing and this writing turned into this book. And what I realized I was doing was going back into these experiences, into the rape, but even further back than that, you know. And I was looking at them from a different perspective. And by interrogating those memories, I was seeing them from many perspectives and I was seeing a different meaning and I was feeling a different thing. And it changed my energy around so many areas of my life in terms of my passion, my relationships. And as I've worked into more officially subconscious reprogramming and certified in that area and emotional trauma healing, I realized that 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 is what it is. It is going back in and rewiring what you have in terms of the meaning around those experiences so that the emotion changes, so that the emotional charge isn't there, so that you can lay down new commands in your brain, right, that, that drive you forward rather than keep you stuck. And so for me, writing this book was just life changing. And I guess the beginning of the path of really seeing how doing this can change how you see yourself and how you see your place in the world. Doing what exactly? Doing, um, doing what part? Um, yeah, so working, working with the mind, you know, oh. and taking that spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. Because again, you know, talking about those layers as you go through those experiences you put an armor on so mm. every single experience is like another armor another armor another armor to protect you from this perception of the world that you have mm. and those armors you get to this point where those armors don't serve you anymore yeah. but you don't know how to you either don't recognize that you have them on at all you're in this like survival mode or you don't know how to to let them go and yeah. that's sorry, I've got a cold. Um, that was where I got to, you know, I got to this place in my life where I, I looked at my life and I looked at myself and I didn't know who I was anymore. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I didn't recognize any part of me. I was miserable. I was financially struggling. I felt like a terrible mum. And I had this moment where we actually ended up in a food bank. And because I'd been trying to build my own business and I was so blocked by myself. I just, I just couldn't get the business out there. I was playing so small. And we ended up in this food bank and my, my kids were so hungry. And as the lady was taking the cereal boxes out of the cupboard to put them in a box, my kids just started wrap, like going into the boxes and putting, shoveling them, the cereal into their mouths. And I just, I, I just stopped and I, I realized like, what have I become and how do I change this? Because right now this, this, this ends. I have no idea what has to change but everything has to change. Everything has to change. And it was like this energetic intention that was the start of changing my life. And it was like an energetic in intention that the universe picked up on. Because from the minute I walked out the door of that food bank, my life did start to change. Mm -hmm. People walked into my life, opportunities showed up. And from there, it was just about saying yes. Wow. You know, it was incredible. Wow, that's such an amazing story. And I'm just getting chills just listening to it. Like that core defining moment where you were like watching your children, like super starving for food. And, and then like in a decision, in a moment, you made a decision that you were going to take accountability for whatever's happening and move forward. And it things were changing one way or another. You didn't necessarily even know how that's it was right. happening, but it was a definitive core defining moment shift in, in you're in everything, right? So I, I feel like change can happen like that. So it, it happens in an instant. It happens in a moment of decision. Like, That's yes, right. it may, you may peel away layers and layers over time, right? But it all happens like when you are soup, when, when in a moment of like clear decision. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't mean that after that, you know, you don't find yourself in the same patterns. Yeah. It's just, you find yourself in the same patterns with a different set of eyes. Mm -hmm. And you start to see like, you know, you're here again because there's something that you're not learning. Yeah. The perception, it, it, perception shift yeah. is so powerful. It's a perception shift. I mean, so much, like you were saying, like the belief system, like your, your beliefs and your perceptions are everything. That's right. 
It's everything. And I named, I named the book um, Life Through a Lens for exactly oh. that reason. Oh my God. It's all about, that. yeah, perception. And, you know, I realized that I'd learned so much about my world from the perception of my, of my mum. And that this wasn't a reality, you know, and that's where we get to. It's like what we see is not reality. We mm-hmm. create reality through how we show up. Yeah. And that's where we have to get into that bold action. You know, like the last two years of my life, I've taken bolder action than I've ever taken before. Mm-hmm. But it had to be driven by feeling. It had to be driven by this feeling of, I guess, power and purpose. Mm-hmm. And that's where we have to shed those layers. Because we can't get to that until we've removed those armors and let those, you know, protective bubbles go yeah. to believe that we, we can do and create and be whoever we want to be. Yes, that's so powerful. And it's so true. The barriers that you've used once to protect yourself and were very, very necessary at a certain point to protect yourself um, because you probably knew no better way um, are eventually will become your prison if you don't. Yeah. They, they only can, they will get you so far, but they won't be part of your future empowered version of yourself. They will get you through the, the victimhood, you know, the, all of the turbulence and they're a byproduct of that. But all of that armor has to be shed moving forward or it becomes uh, just a prison. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, when I really connected with my soul goal and I realized that there was so many other people like me. You know, so many people who have been playing small, Mm -hmm. but have huge passion and huge talent and huge gifts that are only their gifts. Like I wanted to set them free. Like I wanted to see them create the business of their dreams. That's creates the impact that they've always wanted to create. Like for me, it's the rainforest. I'm, I'm really passionate about rainforest conservation and my books being written in partnership with a rainforest organization. Um, so everybody who reads the book basically plants a tree and for me, the tree is the symbol of their growth, right? From the book, changing their own perceptions. But then, you know, in terms of, again, that ripple effect, you think about all of those people, if they could just get over the hurdle of themselves and take that journey, like what kind of a world would we live in? Mm -hmm. I just, I felt the power of that and I felt really drawn to making that my truth, you know, just Mm -hmm. to keep on digging into the core of me and bringing out more of myself to be able to help more people to do exactly the same, you know, Mm -hmm. so that it's world changing and it it sounds really big. And I used to feel too small to say those words, Mm -hmm. but that was the shame that was feeling Mm -hmm. unworthy within myself. Right. So now it's a mission. It's turned into a mission. Yeah. It's a mission, but it sounds, it sounds so grandiose at first and, and, and to, to feel that that's what you're being called to do. And like, that's what's bubbling up inside you. And that's what your soul is like guiding you to. And then you're like, Oh shit, this is actually so much bigger than me. This is like a mission that I'm on. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Which was what drew me to the name of your podcast. I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful, beautifully big, you know, it's yeah. such a, it's such a big name. I was like, I have to, I have to find out who this lady is <laughs> and see what she's doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm so happy that you did. And I can't wait to read your book. When is that supposed to come out? Hopefully by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, it's in its second developmental edit. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm also like I introduced at the start before we went live, just about to have a baby. So <laughs> yeah. fingers crossed it'll be the end, the end of the year. Yeah. So for everybody, before we went live, I was talking to Claire and she said that she was, she's pregnant. I was like, when are you due? And she's like, today. (laughs) (laughs) I just wanted to squeeze the podcast interview in real quick before (laughs) the water broke. (laughs) (laughs) So thank you for squeezing us in. Um, I appreciate that. So what kind of message do you, if you could speak to the woman right now that's listening to this, that um, is like really maybe in that in-between stage, like they're not necessarily really buried in the trauma, but they're, but they're not really in alignment with their divine mission yet, but they are aware of it. They know it, they can feel it They're They know their sacrifice. They know they're playing small in some way and they know that they're meant for more but they don't even know what that more is necessarily Mm -hmm. yet. Maybe they have an idea and some downloads on that, but what would, what do you have to say to that woman? 
that you're not too small. You are not too small. And, you know, there are ways and there are hope. It's like, it's like you're a candle of hope, right? And you just haven't set a light to your flame. So nobody sees that you're there yet. And so I would really encourage people to change the perception of their own personal story. A lot of people who come to me, they come to me with powerful personal stories and a whole bunch of shame that stops them from using their voice. Mm-hmm. They'll say, oh, but it's, 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 not, it's, not a, it's not important. It's not going to impact anybody. Why would anybody care what I've been through? But it means everything, right? It's like everything that you've been through has led you to where you are and will help you to see where you want to go. It's your greatest power in creating the life that you want. So to change that perception of yourself and what you've been through and to understand that you do have so much wisdom and power, it's just a case of unleashing it. That, and to be fair, that's what my program is called, You Unleashed, because we unleash everything that you've been to, to make it be the thing that you become, right? It's an, an unleashing you from those, those, those negative stories to turn them into the thing that drives you, drives you forward, aligned with your purpose, standing in your power, believing that everything is possible because you're going to go out and create it yourself. Yeah. So empowering. Um, it's really true that the wound is your gift when you're ready to perceive it that way. Yeah. And start to move, move into more of a state of acceptance and forgiveness and perceive it from, from that um, perception and, I think that's so powerful. Um, you've had, you know, very traumatic experiences that you were able to shift your perception around and be able to see what, what probably once seemed so uh, devastating to see oh. the higher level of awareness and the higher perception around some of, you know, some of those events. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. But you get so you, you get so wrapped up in the emotion of it all, right? And and I think that's where that perception change and neutralizing that that emotional charge. Mm-hmm. It's almost it's almost like you clear the the fuzz off your glasses and you're like, oh, okay, so that's the truth. It wasn't about me. Mm-hmm. It was about them, or you know that that thing that I believed about the world. That's not true. And it just frees you from like yourself and all of these different stories and beliefs that have held you stuck for so long. And I think I I really feel intuitively that the person listening to this, it is, they are in that place of discomfort. You know, it's like, it's, it's, yeah, like you say, they're not necessarily stuck in the trauma of it all, but they still feel that discomfort. There's something really uncomfortable about where they're at knowing that there is more, but not necessarily knowing how to, to tap into it. Mm -hmm. So listen to that discomfort. Let it be, let it be a message. Like every single emotion we have is a message, right? It's like, it's telling us something. So that discomfort is a, it's a messenger of hope to tell you that there is, there is a way forward and there is something to do if you take action. But I think getting to that place of, you know, intention like I did, where it's like everything has to change. I will walk through fire to figure this out, even though I don't see even what out is. <laughs> you know, when I thought forward and I looked forward and I tried to see a vision of what I wanted to become, I actually couldn't see anything right back then. Mm-hmm. I just knew that I couldn't be where I was anymore. Yeah. And it's oftentimes, though, when it's the most painful that, that people are willing to do whatever it takes. Sometimes, That's right. you know, some people, and I do believe you have a choice on your ascension journey, like you can allow pain to be your motivator for as long as you want to. Yeah. Um, at a certain point, though, you, you make that, that, that you draw that energetic, you know, that line in the sand energetically and physically. And like, this is not something I'm willing to continue. I'm going to do whatever it takes. It's an unwaveringness. It's very much, I just hopped off a different podcast episode. I work a lot with archetypes. You know, the victim archetype is the exact opposite of the warrior archetype. The warrior archetype is the one that really moves forward no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what. And really activating that energy within your within yourself within your being yeah Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Spiritual I love that. warrior, right? Yeah, yeah. Spiritual warrior, right? So. And, and I think, you know, I've worked with so many people. I think the way that I designed my program very intentionally around we work on you first. Mm -hmm. So even if you've got this burning desire to boost your business, you can't work with me unless you agree to eight weeks of working on you first. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, it's like you hit these blocks around strategic mm -hmm. things that should be should be quite easy mm -hmm. you just find yourself unable to get into action with them mm -hmm. and I, I see a lot of impactful businesses in that place of I, I just need to go I just need to show up on Facebook and go live but I, I can't mm -hmm. or I just need to um, do that bit of research but I can't and mm -hmm. all of those reasons that you can't are within yourself mm -hmm. and no amount of strategy is going to change that until you're in this place of I understand myself. I understand what's been holding me back and I'm ready to let that stuff go. And, and again, it creates that energy shift, which then makes the strategy easy. You know, it makes it more, um, yeah, it's like, it's a total energy shift around doing the work, I guess, and putting yourself out there and understanding that you can control how you feel as well. Because in terms of those visibility wounds and going live on Facebook and fearing that you might, be judged or, or offend somebody or it's kind of like you get to this place of my purpose is bigger than that yeah and, I, and I'll, I'm gonna do it anyway you know yeah. so like it's such a powerful energetic shift mm -hmm. yeah it's a commitment to the calling is the way I like to describe yeah. it. like um, I work at in my programs with you know those fear-based archetypes that keep people trapped in imposter syndrome and keep them wow. from and sharing their message and their gift. And, and it's very similar. We're, we're two peas in the pod there with like helping women do this. And I feel it's so necessary. And so many women think that, oh, well, someone else is already doing it. I don't necessarily need to do it. Um, mm. Or, you know, they'll come up with so many excuses to keep them, you know, like, oh, it's saturated. There's so many people. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, so necessary. It's not saturated with you. It's you not know, that, that whole unique yeah uniqueness yeah there's that element that, that only they can bring to the table and the call the mission is so much bigger when you look around at what's going on in on um, planet earth right now there's a reason why they're being called forward there's a reason if you're listening to this that you're feeling this nudge and so much bigger than you you know it's so much bigger than that um and tapping into the 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 hugeness of that was when I was first tapping into that, it was a little scary and overwhelming and, you know, like, and those feelings come up like, oh, well, you know, like all the natural feelings, well, who am I to be doing this? And does this even make sense? And who's going to get it? And, you know, and like all of those kind of things, but, but yet then you ask for a sign, you ask for the synchronicity, you ask for the, you know, your help, you know, uh, from your spirit mm. or whoever's assisting you. And then there it comes and there's the confirmation and there's the you know, the little spiritual nugget that keeps, you know, being th shown to you. So you can, you know, that little spiritual breadcrumb to follow. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't go yeah. away, by the way. If you're listening, no. to it, it doesn't go away. It just gets stronger and louder. That's right. No, it definitely does. Yeah. And I think like with that whole getting into those patterns, finding yourself in those patterns, they get worse. <laughs> It's like, hang on, I've been here before, but this is 10 times worse than, you know, 10 times ago. And, and it's understanding that that is a message that's okay. Well, that means you've got to deal with it. Like, what are you meant to learn? Yeah. What is here in this struggle? What is here in this challenge? What is the opportunity? Mm -hmm. What is the yeah. opportunity for your growth? How can you let the struggle go and just dig into yourself with the, the spiritual practice? Yeah. To really understand the deeper meaning in where you're at. Yeah. That's so interesting. Um, that's so, in, it's, it's so true. I always say the spiritual business is actually one of your biggest ascension tools in your own spiritual ascension journey, because it's triggering all of the BS that's keeping you from fully stepping into your most authentic self. And so you can expect your spiritual business. This isn't like just like a normal business, right? Because I've grown other businesses. They were not like this. You know what I mean? Mm. And, it, and I can be very successful in product you know, based businesses, service oriented businesses, other online businesses, brick and mortar businesses, but stepping onto the spiritual path and creating your, you know, this mission, really, mm -hmm. like it's really a mission. It's not a business, it's a mission. And it, 
triggers all of um, everything that you're still growing through as part of your own yeah. journey. Yeah. So, and I know everybody's on the ascended path, right? Everybody's evolving at whatever rate and through whatever, everybody on planet earth is on the spiritual path, whether they know it or not. But it's like you're super accelerated when you're when you're stepping onto your mission. And I know the moment I accepted the call and I stepped through my own initiation in a guided visualization in 2014 and wow. was told by my guides that your entire life is going to shift and change, but everything that is about to happen to you is all serving the highest and greatest good. See, now and I'm getting the chills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then there was a shit storm that happened after that. It wasn't all butterflies and rainbows, right? Like things were being shed, layers were being peeled away, walls were coming down, like things that I clinged to for validation or approval were being stripped. You know what I mean? It was like mm -hmm. authentic authenticity or bust, right? It was like slowly yeah. peeling toward going towards that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there was something in that. Um I was going to say it's gone. It's just gone. <laughs> it was to do with how, oh no, it's gone. <laughs> it obviously wasn't meant to be. I was saying something then you said, I was saying something about my initiation and you said that so, you said something about that. Like when I said, like, I remember the day I initiated myself and walked through like under guidance from my guides and took the, took on the oath basically to be. Mm. On yeah. And that, and that definitely reflects my shift as well. I feel, I feel like it is that personal commitment because one of the things I've realized as well is like, you can, and this is a harsh reality, like you can see when you start to open your eyes what you're actually committed to by what you have. And that's a hard, you know, when you're in that place of, well, I'm not actually in that, the, the throes of change yet, to be able to acknowledge that whatever you have, you've created and you're asking for through your energy, through your thoughts, through your action. And it can be quite confronting but again, that confrontation sets you free because it gives you the, the opening to change whatever it is you don't want to commit to anymore. And I think that's what I was going to say was there's always an element of this is serving me in some way. Mm. As much as I complain about it, as much as it's hard, as much as I say I don't want to be here anymore, something around this is in my brain keeping me safe. And so identifying what it is like that, it's all about consciousness, just bringing everything into consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, my first ever coach, she said to me that 80% of my work should be on me. And I laughed, like I just laughed. I was like, I, I cannot, you know, this is the food bank time, you know, I can't even feed my kids. How can 80% of what I do be within me? And I guess I just kind of disregarded that a little bit. But now one of my core strategies is at the end of the day, I'm looking at my three things and I'm asking myself, have I posted powerful content today? Check. Okay, well, I've ha have I had powerful conversations today? Check. Have I done my spiritual practice today? Check. Because mm -hmm. those things are, they're revenue gener generating. They mm -hmm. are the three things in my business that, that definitely bring the income in. And if I'm creating income, I'm creating impact. And I'm doing, I'm doing something right, you know? And yeah. so, so much of, so much of that work in the spiritual business, like you say, is just within yourself mm -hmm. and connection to yourself and ongoing connection to yourself to bring these things into consciousness. Because as we elevate through those levels of consciousness and through our levels of success, and we push through those ceilings of success, we actually dredge more up from the bottom of the pond <laughs> and these, you know, these new stories will pop up. And, and they will be very limiting, but you have the consciousness of them and you have tools to be able, able to overcome them, mm -hmm. you know, so that you're constantly moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, so there's a couple of things that you're saying. Um, okay. I'm going to make a note of it. So don't forget. Okay. Um, God, I lost it. <laughs> I lost it. It's going to come back. I promise. Um, okay making money on your gift. I want to bring, I want to talk about this because you, people get a lot of, I've gotten heat for this. Like, who are you mm. to charge for your healing work? And one of the women 
uh, that I, I spoke with the other day, she's suffering through that right now because there's actually a lot of shame around charging for your gift, charging for what you're feeling called to put out into the world. Like it should always be for free. And so my stance on this is that first, probably about 90% of the content I put out is free. A very yeah. small, a small percentage of my content is actually paid content, right? Uh, most, I, I, have, I run an entire business that puts out nothing but free content, right? Um, so I lead with generosity first and foremost. So if someone's not ready to purchase, they don't, you know, they still get value by tuning in and, and listening for free. This podcast as an example, right? Um, and I see a world where we, it would be, I feel it'd be a much more beautiful place if we were all exchanging what we're truly passionate about, what we're f truly called to do and what we're truly um, here uh our mission, our, our, our service to others, right? Like, yeah. and, and so I just, I do, there's a, there's a lot of that going around, not a lot, but I see it. And I see it sometimes pop up with women that are breaking through that dogma and because mm. they know that it's been keeping them stuck and they recognize it's come from, you know, one was their country, the way they normally treat, you know, and the other was religion and things like that, that sort of like money is bad and earning through your spiritual gifts is like a bad thing. And I couldn't disagree yeah. more with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad that you brought that up because that has, has actually been something that has limited me just in the last couple of weeks because I've done really well this year, like a uh, six years of business. This has been the year through I guess one of the worst years for a business <laughs> in terms of, of what the world's going through right and now I'm in this period where I'm obviously about to give birth to my baby and I I want to be able to create even more by doing even less yeah and there was something within me that suddenly felt it was like that sticky yucky icky like it's not a it's not possible to to generate more income by doing less and it's not right and I, I sort of had to really dig into that and, and I had to really get more intimate with my own core values right mm. because at the core of me and my core value is impact mm. and if I'm generating more income then I'm putting more into my rainforest um, conservation project partnership I am putting more into my programs in terms of helping people in terms of the resources I am. And I had to bring it home as well. Like I am putting more into my own family mm -hmm. instead of giving so much away because the last six years has been about doing so much for other people. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be my third little girl who deserves to be invested into as well you know, instead of sacrifice, because those three little humans are going to walk into this planet with their own visions of impact and success. And, you know, and I just, it just, yeah, it, it rocked me because it came down to a value thing. Mm -hmm. And I think if people have this weird idea that money is bad, then they don't have clarity around how, what they would do with that money because yeah. money enables us it enables, just like you said, the world would be better if this, if this exchange was there. Mm -hmm. Currency is called currency because it's meant to flow. It's not just flowing in, it's flowing out. Yeah. So it's yeah. Where, we're, where we're directing that energy. And in terms of what I want to do, there is, there is not much that is selfless. It's not the shiny cars or the big house. It's impact impact within my own family and outside of it but it's not even bad so, to have um a shiny car or a no. big house right like that's if that's no, a desire you can have those things too you know what i mean that's like right. abraham hicks probably makes well, if you do the math on her show it you know what i mean i mean she, she's doing a massive impact for the world and she probably makes she probably her, her company generates at least a million dollars every few months right i know so there's no shame around that, I feel. And I feel like um, uh, lifestyle goals is like always something that I reverse engineer with my clients because at the end of the day, they I see this happen a lot with spiritual te teachers, healers, and light workers is that they overcompensate. I mean, they overgive and they self-sacrifice and they 
undercharge and they coach for free and they do all these things. And at the end of the day, they're burned out and they're overwhelmed and they're not scaling their business so they can work less and make a bigger impact. And That's so it's right. like the more they actually do, like the less freedom and fun that they have. And you have to ask yourself, like, what's in the highest and greatest good for all involved? Is it for me to show mm -hmm. up as my most empowered, abundant self and be an example of abundance and love and yeah. that? you know, that you can have and be and do whatever it is that your desires are? Um, or is it, you know, lack and, you know, mm. creating one for the other and not being able to That's... fully step into and hold that space because you're overworked and overwhelmed. So now you can't hold the same sacred space that you would normally be able to hold, right? Yeah. I just feel like we are here to shine by our own example. And if you're gonna be an, ex I, I like to shine and I'm committed to shine as an example of, of abundance and yeah. we don't have to block anything and, and we don't have to suffer to make, to help other people heal. Right. That's right. That's right. And that element of joy, yeah. you know, like I think mm -hmm. again, that was an awakening for me, the start of the year, my coach, I was talking about these business goals for the year and what I was going to create. And she just said, so Claire, what about your personal goals? And I just had to stop and I was like, I have no idea. Mm. And I'd been on that journey, I guess, of, for so long of survival mode. Mm. And it was like, I, it wasn't that I didn't know what brings me joy because I've definitely discovered those things over the last two years. But mm. really and honestly, was I in integrating those into, into what I, how I was showing up my day? Mm. And the answer was no, I was still leaning on the side of, of hustle. Mm. And so, you know, when you can, when you can be really connected with the things that bring you joy every day that are raising your frequency, mm -hmm. like the way that I show up in my business, mm -hmm. like you say, not being burnt out, not being unmotivated, not being tired, not being in this place where you're like, oh gosh, like who are you serving them? Mm -hmm. But enabling those things that bring you that joy, that light you up, that keep you connected to your soul fire, that keeps yeah. the fire, you know, in flames, burning, bright you just go about your whole business with a whole different energy and a whole different like it's fire it's it's power it's fire and power for sure i i totally agree i think that your lifestyle goals should be part of your business model like i'm not talking to you i'm specific i'm talking about in general like lifestyle how you want to live how many you know you, how many hours do you want to be available what days are off limits where you just want to be free and fun and not worry about doing anything you know what i mean how many, you know, so I build those things in and I feel like it's a business model. It's part of my business. Yeah. It's part of my business strategy, right? Because otherwise you can get really stuck in the hustle and the grind. And then at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, you're being of service and you're, and you're helping, but you're not really showing up as, oops, there's my chair just, but you're not really showing up as high as in that high frequency that you would, if you were just like, what's going to light you up and what's going to make you feel abundant and what's going to make it so fun that you just want to jump out of bed and you can't wait to start the next day and yeah. like you're just operating in the frequency of joy. Yeah. And you're not valuing yourself. And that's what I had to really connect with in this last couple of weeks. It was like, Claire, where's your self-worth? You know, like you, uh, you, you've got the results. You can see the results. You, you understand your own value. So where is that, like, what has shifted? And I guess this happens a lot when our environment changes and our situation changes. It can cause us to feel, I guess, in that kind of uncertain place again. Mm -hmm. So again, bringing it back to vision and clarity and really seeing what you're creating and understanding why being connected to that calling and that soul goal just brings everything back into perspective, your perspective. Mm -hmm. the perspective through your own values mm -hmm. to make sure it's all truly yours and you're not kind of I guess buying into the whispers that it's 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 wrong to earn money for spiritual healing and, and coaching and whatever else light working it's you know just bringing it all back to yourself and what do you believe what do you value yeah what's I'm, the impact that you're creating what's the life you're creating and why are you doing it all in the first place mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm I'm happy Wayne Dyer and Eckhart Tolle and Abraham Hicks and all the other spiritual teachers that actually profit from their spiritual work and teachings don't fall into that trap, right? Because oh. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no, I do. I do. 
And I think it's interesting to see, like, when you look at those people, all of them do give because it's like, it's just a natural part of, of abundance. Right. Yeah. And, and we create, we create abundance by feeling good so that we attract good. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's, it's, yeah, again, it's such an energetic thing. It's not a place of lack. Yeah. It's a cycle that you tap into. That's just abundant. You know? Yeah, and not holding back, like, you know, people hold on to things like there's an award for it, right? Especially money. Mm-hmm. But the magic in letting it go, letting it flow to see that it does flow back. You know, as long yeah. as you have that that clarity of, you know, what you're creating. It's it's interesting. It's like, it's like, for me, clarity is, it's a it's a it's a magic. It's a secret. And I'm starting to get the nickname clarity. <laughs> because of how you know it's such a big part of what I do but it just makes such a difference I think in terms of that manifestation Mm, oh yeah the one of the things you got me laughing because it's like I used to be in that feast and famine mode and one of the surest fire ways to deplete my bank account was to tighten up and not and not want to spend my money yeah (laughs) it's so funny because the fear of loss kicks in right so it's like you make all this money and I then I'll go build it up again and next thing you know have another like multiple five figure month and all of this and this was like especially back during real estate I could have like these huge months make more in like 60 days than a lot of people will make in a year I could just totally crush it and have all this money rolling in and then this fear of loss or this like fear of the other shoe dropping, right? Like, mm-hmm. like, like that lack, uh, not recognizing that this is like a continuous flow and that like, it's meant to be spent. It's meant to be invested. It's meant to flow. The minute That's you right. cut, you cut off the flow and then you tighten up because you're scared or fearful and it's very subtle, but you still even energetically or physically, like you're not flowing with it and you're not spending it and you go into like super saver mode where you're like you I remember like the more money I had the more anxious I got for some reason because the fear of losing it would kick up more Mm -hmm. where I was I would feel more free and less less tight in my chest and less anxious when I had less money in the bank yeah because it was was like less to lose less to lose less to lose and so it's really interesting because the fear of loss you you'll you're only able to truly like manifest what you're willing to lose because oftentimes the fear of loss will then keep you playing smaller because guess what it's a lot less painful if you lose a little bit yeah that's right and it's a lot less painful if you just love a little bit yeah. right and so don't go for the you know the ultimate love story don't go for like the ultimate you know so you play small below what you're actually able to create for yourself because the fear of that going away one day is can be so crippling so it's really interesting it's like the more money i had the more i was in fear <laughs> and i think as well like i had to really understand myself on that like where was i where was i seeing a status and, and that went back to childhood and, you know, it's sort of, went, I, I learned through experiences that this amount of money meant safety and security and this amount, amount of money meant lack. And so it's like, you have to hold on to this amount of money because then that's, that's, you know, validating safety and security, but it's not truth because actually you're at the center of creating that money in the first place. And all that is important is how you show up <laughs> and that you do show up. And, and so that was kind of a, a bit of a, yeah, I think it was the same thing when I started to see money in the bank, mm-hmm. I had to really have a, have a chat to myself and really understand myself and understand where I was seeing some sort of um, meaning like this equals this. Mm-hmm. And how I could just let that go and and and, and unblock that flow, mm-hmm. because you're exactly right. In those moments where I did hold on to it, <laughs> it did stop flowing. It's it's crazy. It is really crazy. Yeah, it's just, it's if you cling to it, it's gonna go. <laughs> if you need yeah. to cling to it, it's gonna go. Whether that's a relationship or money or whatever the case may be, if you're clinging to it for some form of safety or security or validation or something like that it's going to get stripped pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. In my experience, in my experience, you know. And we have to we have to tell the story more because I think scarcity mindset is one of the biggest things that I come across in terms of a block. It is, and I call I call it starving healer syndrome. I posted about this wow. on my Instagram quite a bit. It's the starving healer syndrome that keeps, you know, like 
always like, you know, just, you know, very synonymous, you know, with like the starving, what is it? The starving, um, starving artist kind of thing. Yeah. You know? So same concept, but it's, it's like an epidemic with healers and, and light workers I see. And, yeah. and you want to give and you want to be, so leave with generosity. I mean, I always leave with generosity. I, I put out free master classes like that are such valuable content, you know, so you, you still lead with generosity, right? But there's yeah. no shame in being able to support yourself in your mission work. And I would say that it's actually your duty to support yourself in your mission work and live abundantly and be an example that you can have be or do create for yourself, whatever it is, by empowering yourself and ascending your soul and raising your frequency and shifting your perceptions. And by doing anything opposite of that, you're being an example of the opposite of that. And so I think it's our duty to step into that, to be that shining light so other people can have the permission to do it as well and be like, wow, you know, because we really are stepping up as examples, as as a teacher healer uh, in this paradigm shift that's happening. Mm. It sounds like this big grandiose thing again, right? But something yeah. that sounded like something too big to talk about back when I was really scared around that subject, right? But yeah. it's it's true what's really happening on the planet right now with, during this paradigm shift. And it's very, very important to show up in your highest frequency. And that's not discounting that you go through things that aren't high frequency and they all have value. But at the end of the day, like honoring yourself and, and living your most joyful life is, is part of your sole purpose, right? And, and, and just using your voice and speaking your truth. Mm -hmm. to know that 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 voice has a place that voice has a power your authentic authenticity is everything mm -hmm. I, I work with so many people that at the start they just they're just si stuck behind silence mm -hmm. and it can be from the smallest experiences in the childhood you know things like being seen and not heard mm -hmm. or dad not listening to what you said properly or um I had, I had one client who she just remembered crying, be, being, a, being a baby and crying and nobody came. And in, in that kind of, that youngest moment, laying down that pathway in her mind that I'm not heard, I don't have a voice. And we carry these things through life and these experiences just cement these ideas and we have to get back to, we have a truth, we have a voice. Mm -hmm. And right now, the world needs to hear it more than ever. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I, I so agree. And I loved hearing your, your overall transformation and your story and, and your, and how you were able to shift and spin your wounds into wisdom and then shine this bright light to help others to do the same. It's very beautiful work and it's very yeah. much needed. Um, and um, why don't you share with the audience, whoever is resonating and wants to check you out and like get to know you better, like where can they find you online and where's the best and of course, I'll share any of the links in the show notes, but where can they find you? I love hanging out on inst Instagram. So um, at CW underscore full underscore circle. Mm -hmm. And through there, there's a link as well where they can access a free soul goal kit. So they can just take those first steps, you know, to there's a bunch of free content to really help them connect with themselves. And um, also my website, cwfullcircle.com. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, you guys, you heard that. And I'm going to put all of those links in the show notes. So wherever you're, um, if you're watching this video, because this is the video version as well, goes out to YouTube, you'll be able to find the links there. Um, thank you so much, Claire, for coming on the show and sharing your wisdom with us. I really enjoyed our conversation. And I'm sure that our <laughs> listeners are going to get massive value from this too. So Thank, you. Thank you for having me. I really, really, I've loved this. It's been awesome. <laughs> um, okay, you guys tune in to another episode soon and namaste.